But to talk about what went down on Sunday and all things football, we're pleased to welcome our good friend Tori Gurley, Packers and Browns alum, and and a few other teams. Hey, Tori, welcome back to the RP Show. It's been it's been too long. What are you laughing at, man? What are you laughing at? <laughs> it's been a long time, man. Thanks for having me on, Rod. Right? Yes, it has been too long. Am I going to see you at the Senior Bowl this year? What's what's the deal, man? You busy making plans for that or what? Absolutely, man. Can't wait to see you. It's going to be a great time. And uh, like I said, you were here a couple months ago over the summer, but hopefully we'll get to sit down and have a nice meal and be able to catch up. Uh, yes, we're due for it. Uh, it happened to be last year, the same weekend of the NHL All-Star Game, but we looked at it. It's an eight-hour drive from here. I can't wait to go. Now, what were, what were your takeaways from Week 8 in the NFL? Yours specifically, Tori. What grabbed your attention on Sunday? The Denver Broncos beating the Kansas City Chiefs, you know, that that was shocking. Um, and obviously the Dallas Cowboys handling business against the, the L.A. Rams. I mean, those guys, they're looking good. And now, you know, everybody's getting ready for the matchup between the, the Cowboys and Eagles coming up this week. So um, it's going to be some pretty good games. And, you know, I'm, I'm excited to sit back and be a fan and see who, who wins and who loses. Uh, trust me, uh, I get it. Now, the thing with the Denver-Kansas City game, the result was shocking, but correct me if I'm wrong, they're saying Patrick Mahomes was sick. I mean, I went to the Dolphins game. I wasn't watching any of the pregame coverage or whatever. Was that, was that a thing going in that Mahomes was sick, or was that just an excuse coming out of the game that why he didn't play that well? Now, well, the, the word is that um, his kid was in daycare, and the baby got sick and then you know how it is when you have children and you bring kids home and gets the whole house sick and it's just something that you know my son and i we caught a virus at the same time but i felt like i got it worse than him so um you know the, even though these guys are are world-class athletes you know they still have the same day-to-day -day problems as you know the everyday person yeah. so it's it's pretty cool when you know you, you hear a story like that because we all can relate to you know, having a, a a child being sick and and the parent end up getting the the uglier side of the of the virus. I love when the audience comes in with their questions. It makes my job a whole lot easier. So Jamie in Cole Harbor, Nova Scotia, writes in and he says, "Sorry if I'm beating the same dead horse here, but can you pinpoint the issues in Chicago? The Bears were projected to have a better record than what they have today." Yeah, it's just, uh, I mean, number one is injuries. You know, like Justin Fields, you know, he's injured. And, you know, they brought in a, a player from Division II school and from Shepard. You know, he was starting quarterback last night. And, you know, Chicago is just, you know, they're just disorganized, man. They have a lot of things wrong with them. And hopefully um, they can get it together because if not, they'll continue to be, you know, the, the, the doormat of the NFL right now. I got to ask you, you're sitting there so close to Charlotte. Are they not, they, did they celebrate the win over the Texans or not? Or do they, do you know what I, like you're in lose now mode for the rest of the year, unless you feel that you finally want to get a win for Bryce Young. I think that was a, they're celebrating the win because number one, um, the owner, David Tepler, you know, the huge hedge fund billionaire, that's his first win as an owner. You know, he, and you know, I'm quite sure he's he's obviously he's financially invested in it, but emotionally, you know, it feels good to get get that piano off his back, you know, to be able to say, hey, we're we were on the right side, the winning side. And, and same for Bryce, you know, being the number one overall pick, um, coming in with all these high expectations and um for him to, you know, to lose five or six in a row, man, it, that's great for his morale and lets him know that he's on the right path. But right now the Panthers you know, they, they got a lot of things to fix, but at least, you know, they can fix it knowing that they were able to get a win under their belt. Hey, I got one for you. As a Packers alum, they've lost four in a row. What's your take? On, has the Jordan Love experiment failed, A? And B, is your boy Aaron Rodgers going to see the field again this year? Because you see the rumor is that he will. Yeah, they, they say you don't appreciate something until it's gone, so... You know, for 30 years, the Packers have had a, you know, a long run with having quarterback, stable quarterback play from Brett Favre to Aaron Rodgers. And now, 
Um, you know, the Packer Nation is experiencing what it's like to be a, a Lions fan or a Browns fan or a Bears fan, you know, where you struggle to get wins and, and it's tough. You know, it's almost an eyesore to watch those guys go out and compete because it's completely different from what you become accustomed to seeing with the offense being able to go up and down the field and put up points. And yesterday um, I watched the game and, you know, they struggle, you know, and, you know, Jordan Love, you know, hopefully he figures it out. But if not, you know, this business will move on and they'll find another guy. But, you know, winning is hard and, and you can't take these quarterbacks for granted because these guys can they can make or break a franchise. John in Winnipeg says, who's going to lead the Vikings now that Cousins is out for the rest of the year? They're going to have to make a move um, because the, the backup they brought in, I mean, this kid seemed like he was a deer in headlights, and he almost gave the game away with the 14-point lead. So um, the tra- I think the trade deadline is tomorrow, and um, you know we'll see what they do. But if they stay pat, it lets you know that they might just continue to you know, allow this thing to play out and, you know, get rid of Kirk Cousins since he has a pretty big contract and maybe draft a younger guy and just start from scratch. You know, Tori, we've never talked about it, but I wonder if you ever had designs on being a general manager. And the reason I ask that is it's one thing to have a talented team to put it together, but it's another to figure out salaries. Like I'm looking at the Dolphins here yesterday and I'm watching it with Gil Scott. I think you know Gil. And we're looking at Tyreek Hill. I'm like, why is he? Why did Kansas City get rid of him? Was he a bad actor? And he's like, they couldn't afford him. They had to pay the quarterback. So now they have this embarrassment of riches here with the Dolphins, but a cheap quarterback for now in Tua, who may end up being the league MVP. But isn't it just, it's all as much how you disseminate your money as is anything else. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's the tough part where, you know, you, you got it. You, you want to land on draft picks. You know, you, you got to nail those because it kind of gives you flexibility to go out and splurge. And um, I'll give you an example, the L.A. Rams. You know, they did a good job at, at nailing on draft picks and they decided to go all in with, you know, attaining Matthew Stafford. And they were able to get them and it paid all for them. They weren't a Super Bowl. But now all these contracts have ballooned to where these guys are getting paid huge <laughs> salaries. And now the Rams look the way they did versus the Cowboys, where, you know, you got Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup, and Aaron Donald, and those guys get paid a, you know, a, a healthy salary, and you're playing with a bunch of young players. So that's why it's a huge urgency for a team like the San Francisco 49ers to get it going because, you know, Brock Purdy right now is on a rookie contract deal. Same thing with uh, Tua. Tua is still on his rookie deal. And, you know, these guys' contracts are coming up. And once you pay them that that big money, it, you don't have any flexibility at all with uh, you know getting a guy like Tyreek Hill and another guy contract that's coming up for the Dolphins is Jalen Waddle. So um, you know they have some moves to make, but hopefully they can take advantage of this season because if not, you know that team they're going to have to you know sell they're going to have to get rid of players just to create cap space for the quarterback. Are you thinking Brock Purdy? Is all that, despite the recent struggles of the 49ers? I mean, they got rid of Jimmy G and Trey Lance. He won the game of Survivor there in San Francisco. I guess he's got to be the guy. Yeah, um, I say that Cal Shanahan is amazing at utilizing all his quarterbacks. You know, if it's Brock Purdy or if they need to sit him down and put in Sam Darnold, you know, the guy that's his backup. Um, Cal Shanahan is great at catering offense to his quarterback. Um, this guy's been successful. I mean, you can you can go back to his days with the Houston Texans, you know, and, and he was a, a coordinator down there. And, you know, you had guys like Andre Johnson ba- breaking, you know, NFL wide receiver records. And then, um, you know, Kyle was also in Cleveland where, you know, guys had big seasons, you know, Josh Gordon, uh, Jordan Cameron, you know, tight end was a, a tight end, all pro tight end, uh, pro bowl. And then what he did in Atlanta, you know, Julio Jones, uh, Roddy White, um, you know, Matt Ryan, they led him to the Super Bowl. So he's proven when it comes to being able to squeeze all the, the, the talent out of the players he have at disposal. But now, you know, they got to get it done because if not, you know, that's something that's going to happen where these uh, contracts are going to balloon on 
on the 49ers, and they're going to have to get rid of all that amazing talent that they currently have on the roster. Are you missing any of the uh, broadcasting end of this business or just loving too much the personnel recruiting side of it? I mean, I, I still do my hits here and there. I, it's always great to be on this show. It's the best show in all of North America. So oh, make sure God. everybody tunes in you. and check out Rod. Um, but no, it's, you know, whenever I have my time in front of the camera, it's great. But I do love being on this side. Um, we're getting towards the end of the season where we're extending out invites and offers for these guys to play in the game. And, uh, you know, we're, we're going back and forth with NFL personnel, figuring out what players they want to see. and. You know, it's just a great opportunity to be on this side. So um, it gives me flexibility. You know, it keeps me around Kim and TJ. And, and um, you know, it, oh. I love it, man. I, I, don't, I don't take it for granted at all. I'm so glad you're so happy. And just remember, Tori, everything happens for a reason. And we're right where we're supposed to be. That's a fact, Jack. Now, how closely <laughs> are you watching the CFL? How close are you following it, man? Because it's the hottest time of the year right now. Yes, it's, it's getting time. It's towards the end of the year where it's time to make a great cup run. So, any predictions? Like, let's be honest. Apparently, Cody Fajardo is all that, which I told everybody. Hamilton and Calgary are the hottest teams in the league. Toronto setting records, your old team. What do you think is going to happen? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm always going to pull for Toronto because that was my old team, and, and I'm going to go with them. But um, I'm a huge fan of Cody Fajaro. Like, I, obviously, he was a teammate of mine in Toronto and so proud of how he's handling business. And, you know, I, I want to see him get a ring eventually. You know, he's a guy that works extremely hard. And I remember when he was behind Ricky Ray and Trevor Harris. So he was behind Logan Kilgore. So for him to – have his own team and to go out and, and, and make noise and, and lead the guys, you know, I'm just extremely proud because I remember when he was just a guy on the back end of the roster waiting for opportunity. So it's, it's always great to see, you know, guys get rewarded for the hard work that they put in. It is. Uh, Randy in Winnipeg watching, he says, great interview. One of my favorites, Tory Gurley for your regular guests. I said, um, yes, he absolutely is. I'm one of our favorites too. Look, I don't want to end this interview by triggering <laughs> you. Okay. But <laughs> when, you left, when you left Toronto, was Jim Barker the GM? Yes, he yeah. was. He was That's my, what I thought. My GM. Yeah, all right. Well, you know, he's on here. He's on here every Friday. And uh, last week he brought up, he's like, yeah, in Toronto, we had to get rid of three receivers in one day, blah, 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 blah. And I blacked out when he said it. I don't even remember what he said after that because I was so upset. So Sort of like yeah. they had to go. But as I recall, yeah. you were kind of caught off guard by that. Are we talking Absolutely. ancient history here? Does not matter or, or what? Oh, no. We, no, we definitely could, could bring it up. So um, I do have a strong personality. Um, but I, it was one of those things where it was just between, I would say, uh, Scott Milanovic and, and the offensive coordinator, Brady. You know, he was, uh, those were the guys that I would communicate. And, and I had a way of words because I'm a competitor, an ultimate competitor. But um, for any teammate or anyone else in the building, I always had the utmost respect for him. Same thing with, with uh, Jim Barker, you know, respect. But when I, when I was on the field, there were things that I felt we could have done differently because we had a loaded team. You know, when you go back and look at the talent that we had, even though we were rookies, um, we were really good. I mean, we were super talented and, you know, we had guys that were, you know, on the back end of the roster that end up playing on NFL teams, you know, like that's how deep we were. And I just hated that, you know, the, the bottom kind of fell out. But if, you know, it's just like anything in business, you know, you got to throw guys under the bus. And if I was one of those guys, they had to throw under the bus because they felt like the season was, was going into tank, then so be it. But, um, you know, the fans know, my teammates know, and there is no ill will. It's just part of the business. And I'm forever grateful to have that opportunity um, to be an Argonaut because I end up meeting my wife. And that was the best thing right. that ever happened to me. And I ended up meeting you, Rod. So, you know, everything happens yeah, for just a reason, say so that. it's all love. There you go. There you go. I was just saying that yeah, earlier. And if that's beautiful. okay, well, I'm glad oh, yes. that you explained that because when Jim said that, I, I got triggered the other day. 
Because I'm like, you're not telling the whole story. I don't know what the story is, but if, you know, if you're trying to make Tory look bad, I'm upset. And uh, I'm glad that you explained that. And like you say, and, it's and all one last water thing. Under the bridge. I got yeah. one more thing. Like there was a, so there was a train ride incident that um, there, you know, obviously it was Kevin Elliott, Vidal Hazleton, and myself. And you know, I was so mad we lost the game that I didn't even get on the train with the team. I got on the plane and flew back to Toronto. Like, I was so upset. And, um, you know, I just – I remember flying back because I didn't want to be on a train for four hours. I think we were coming back from Montreal or something like that. I think it was like a three-hour, four-hour train ride. And I decided to jump on a plane. And when I got – I went back to my, uh, my condo and, you know, I was able to relax. And then I got a call the next day. and I was caught off guard because when I walked in the office, they were like, yeah, we got to cut you. And it was just like, what? And then that's when I kind of heard about the things that kind of happened on the train ride back home. But I wasn't even on that train ride or, you know, the, the, I was on it literally on a flight and I was just trying to figure out like how the hell our season really just kind of just kind of crumble like that. I mean, we were the year before we were in the playoffs and we went from being a playoff team to you know, just having a bunch of injuries and things that just didn't go our way. But yeah, I was definitely, um, you know, I was definitely surprised when I got the call saying I was being cut because it just, it literally came from nowhere. Maybe they could call it yeah, conduct detrimental. I didn't get on the plane. I mean, I didn't get on the train with the team, but I just wanted to get back home because I was just, you know, I was hot, but that was it. You know, like, well, <laughs> Barker can't say anything you, else. You've asked. You know? <laughs> You, you've asked me for some advice on a lot of things, but don't ever ask me how to go about biting my tongue because I have not figured that one out yet. Nor have you. Yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. Yes, we're, <laughs> we're on the same oh, yeah. team. Thanks, Tori. Appreciate you. Uh, my best to the family. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. The great Tori Gurley. Uh, locker room uh, neighbor with Aaron Rodgers back in the day. He's got a lot of uh, great information.